I'm David Radke, a PhD candidate at the University of Waterloo. I'm going to talk about some work done with my co-authors, Kate Larson and Tim Brecht, titled Exploring the Benefits of Teams and Multi-Agent Learning. A team is defined as the integration of individuals' efforts towards the accomplishment of a shared goal. Teams exist all around us, and the science of teamwork is often studied in organizational psychology and biology analyzing areas such as industry teams, sports teams, and how animals can work together, say, when hunting. Agents working together has been a popular area of study in multi-agent systems for several decades. This began with agents both believing actions would achieve some mutually desired goal and evolved to agents actually sharing plans and intentions. And then finally, to the formation of tree hierarchies of subgroups to complete subtasks to achieve some overall goal. More recent work in AI teams includes advances in ad hoc teamwork and multi-agent reinforcement learning, where teammates often share a common team-based reward. These are typically in task completion or two team zero sum domains. However, AI has been criticized for its disregard for adapting significant findings from organizational psychology. Recently, more emphasis on cooperative AI has increased the focus of studying mixed motive domains, such as sequential social dilemmas, since RL agents usually fail to solve these. Existing work, which helps agents solve mixed motive domains, can be categorized into decentralized and centralized systems. Decentralized systems include features such as social norms, punishment, and institutions, however, are reliant on truthful reporting, have non-stationarity, or assumptions of agent control. Centralized systems have access to all agents during, during training and are more organized, though have a single point of failure and are brittle to changes in the environment. We position teams between these two categories as a way to provide more structure than purely decentralized systems and more autonomy than centralized systems. Our work makes the following contributions. We define a general model of teams inspired by both early work in AI and organizational psychology. We examine the theoretical ramifications of teams in the context of social dilemmas, and we perform an extensive empirical evaluation which shows teams help agents develop pro-social behavior despite incentives to defect. We model our environment as a normal stochastic game with N agents. And we enrich this environment by dividing the agents into, into disjoint teams so that agents belong to exactly one team as a base case. Agents are given a new reward function in which they share their rewards evenly with their teammates. We explore multi-agent teams in two environments, the iterated prisoner's dilemma and the cleanup grid world game. In the IPD, agents are paired to play a single round of the prisoner's dilemma game according to this payoff matrix. This game is repeated and the agents are given new counterparts at each round with equal probability of coming from any team. Agents observe only their counterparts team and receive their team-based reward after their interaction. We refer you to the paper and the appendix for the full derivation of the equilibrium analysis. However, we find that the environmental conditions in which an agent's better off cooperating is when the probability of being paired with a teammate is greater than or equal to two times the cost over the benefit plus the cost. To evaluate this domain empirically, we implement the game with 30 DQN agents split up into disjoint teams. As a base case, we explore when teams are of the same size and refer to the team structure as the number of teams slash the number of agents per team. We first visualize the incentives, where the x-axis shows three different cost-benefit payoff schemes, fixing the cost at 1 and varying the benefit to be 10, 5, and 2. Each color bar represents a different team structure shown on the right-hand side. Negative or no bars represents when agents have the incentive to defect, and positive bars represent when agents have the incentive to cooperate. We bookmark the team structures with the fully mixed motive environment, which represents the regular prisoner's dilemma, and the fully cooperative environment. The top graph shows the mean population reward achieved by DQN agents over five trials 
with 95% confidence intervals. We normalize the re reward between the positive benefit and the negative cost to compare across environments. When the benefit is two, every team structure does better than no teams. However, the reward follows a similar pattern to the incentives. As the cost increases to five and 10, despite defection being incentivized in 58% of team structure environments, shown as the negative or no bars on the bottom, every team structure achieves basically the same reward as the fully cooperative environment. The literature in evolutionary biology often refers to different levels of cooperation, highlighting that some types of cooperation are not equivalent. Levels of cooperation are yet to be explicitly explored in the multi-agent RL literature. However, teams allow us to identify two levels of cooperation, within team and between team cooperation. The graphs on the bottom show the percent of actions which are cooperation along the y-axis and over time of the experiments along the x-axis. Green lines represent agent policies towards agents on other teams and blue represents their policies towards their own teammates. Shown in the left plot when the benefit is two, agents immediately learn to identify their teammates and cooperate, however still defect towards other teams. When the benefit increases to five, agents adapt their in-team cooperative behavior towards agents on other teams and cooperate at both levels despite the incentive to defect. The cleanup game is a temporally and spatially extended Markov game, which represents a social dilemma. Agents that Apples that carry rewards grow in an orchard at a rate dependent on the amount of waste in an adjacent river. Agents prefer others to clean the river so that they can collect apples, though everyone doing this leads to no apples growing. We implement six PPO agents and divide them into evenly sized teams to be consistent with the IPD. Agents on the same team share rewards and the same color in the environment. We first show the reward achieved in cleanup over eight separate trials when agents are divided into four different team structures. The y-axis shows the mean population reward and the x-axis shows environmental time steps. When agents act as individuals, the population succumbs to the dilemma and achieves low reward. But when agents are fully cooperative, they achieve much higher reward. However, agents that are divided into two teams of three or three teams of two achieve over 30% more reward than the fully cooperative environment. In these settings, agents are cooperative within their team, but the mixed motives of the environment are maintained between these teams. This result is even more significant when we consider that previous work often benchmarks against the fully cooperative system, since fully pro-social agents have been thought to achieve the most reward in cleanup. We also evaluate teams for the inverse Gini index to evaluate reward equality. The y-axis here shows equality so that one represents a system that's completely equal. We find that individual agents achieve lower equality along with their low rewards. And that the fully cooperative system achieves perfect equality by definition since all agents share rewards evenly. While teams achieve the highest reward, they also achieve high equality, which is also significantly higher than the individual agents. But how do teams do this? How can teams achieve significantly higher reward and high equality together? We find the answer when analyzing the policies often learned by agents, concluding it's due to efficient division of labor learned by teams. Here we show the number of apples picked by each agent in the top plot and the number of cleaning actions taken in the bottom plot. We find that agents learn to autonomously learn roles and divide labor between agents that either mostly pick apples or mostly clean the river. This scenario shows that one team of six agents learns to divide into two apple pickers and four river cleaners. And individual agents succumb to the dilemma and few apples grow. However, teams converge to a more efficient division of labor policy. Both team structures learn that the environment can support four apple pickers and only needs two river cleaners. This global joint policy leads to significantly more reward than any other observed division of labor among the two roles here. In summary, we find that agents are able to immediately identify and cooperate with their teammates. 
Interestingly, agents learn to adapt this cooperative behavior towards non-teammates, despite various incentives to defect. This behavior may be comparable with different levels of cooperation in humans, similar to increasing cooperation from just kin selection to different notions of reciprocity, for example. In cleanup, agents learn to specialize their behavior from only their team-based reward signal. We argue that multi-agent teams should change how role specialization is viewed. While some work identifies specialization to be suboptimal, team forming and coalition structure generation algorithms often construct teams with specific roles to fill. Of course, it's always important to consider various unintended side effects when implementing systems, as some team structures may achieve more reward or higher quality in different environments. We see many interesting directions of future work with multi-agent teams, such as exploring the impacts of teams with unequal size, or when unfavorable cooperation, such as nepotism or bribery, tend to naturally emerge. We have constructed our team's model in a way so that communication or trust and sanction mechanisms can be implemented directly on top, which may lead to some interesting research. We've already published follow-up work at the Adaptive and Learning Agents Workshop at AMOS this year and posted the paper on Archive. In that paper, we implement a model which we call Credo and remove the assumption that agents on a team fully share rewards. You can scan this QR code or find the paper on my webpage. Finally, this work would not have been possible without our various funding sources and colleagues which have helped out along the way. Thank you.